Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you're doing really well. Today, I'm gonna be ranking the five Dior Sauvage fragrances from worst to best in a couple different ways. First, by my own personal preference, and then by what I think is best suited for the vast majority of people. Because those two things don't always perfectly line. And today's video is actually requested by a Beast Mode Gent member who basically just actually requested me to go through as many lines as possible and rank them like I had done with the Mugler Amen line. So this is the first of those Dior Sauvage. Let's jump into it. And also a shout out to all you Beast Mode Gents out there. You know who you are. So the five Dior Sauvage fragrances that we will be ranking are Sauvage Very Cool Spray, Sauvage Eau de Toilette, Sauvage Eau de Parfum, Sauvage Parfum, and last but not least, Sauvage Elixir, the newest of the bunch. So those are the five, and uh, we're gonna kick it off with what is my personal least favorite of the Sauvage line as of filming this video. Very cool spray. This one's got that Sauvage DNA. It's got the citrus, the lavender, the ambroxan, all the stuff that you would expect. You're gonna find that in here. Only obviously here, it comes in a little can instead of a glass bottle, and it's an air spray instead of your typical atomizer. So that means you basically press down and it sprays until it runs out or you let go. I will demonstrate. My hand <laughs> completely sucked. I don't even know why I was holding this. Now the performance on this is not that bad, but to be fair, you're completely drenching yourself as you saw right there. There's a whole lot coming out. It doesn't smell bad. I don't dislike it. It's just the one that I wear the least. And by the least, I mean never. It is the freshest of the bunch, but I, I just don't really go for the whole, the whole spray can thing. It is useful though. Uh, if you, you know, want to throw it in a gym bag or something like that, or just take it with you, it, it's a little easier to travel with than a glass bottle. So I'll give it that. Don't dislike the smell, but something has to come in last place. And it's that. Next up for me is going to be in fourth place, Sauvage Parfum. This one has bergamot, mandarin, sandalwood, and olibanum. This of the bunch, I would say off my skin probably is the weakest. Now it's not horrifically weak, but it's noticeably weaker than everything else. It does have more maturity than say the Eau de Toilette or, or very cool spray in the way it comes across. So it comes across a little more sophisticated, a little more grown up, if you want to call it that. It's got a nice touch of darkness to it, a little bit of a, a slight incensey smokiness as well. I think the thing that really really holds this back for me personally is that for this size bottle, 100 milliliters, it's $155 retail. That is not cheap. And even the smallest size of this, which is two ounces or 60 milliliters, I think is like $127, right in that range. So it's really expensive. And to get a fragrance from a line where you would expect a big performance and it's the parfum to spend that much money and not really get a lot of performance, I gotta dock at some points there. The smell itself though, I really do like. I think it smells nice. I think it's great for an evening out, especially in more formal occasions where maybe you don't want something that loud. But for me, fourth place. Still do like it though. Honestly, I like the smell of all Dior Sauvages. I know some people are gonna be like, <laughs> no! Uh, Dior Sauvage is the devil, but uh, I like it. Now we're moving into the top three for me personally, and this is where it gets hard because on any given day, it could be any of these. So realistically, they're all jumbled there right together. Um, and and it's really difficult for me to just, you know, rank them. So keep that in mind, these these top three, they're just, you know, it, it's like 1A, 1B, 1C at this point. Number three, I'm gonna go with Sauvage Eau de Toilette the original. Now, to be fair, this one is the Sauvage that I've worn the most over the years. Now, of course, it's got a bit of a head start. It came out first and it was really heavily hyped and I wore it a good amount when it came out, of course. But uh, nowadays, I, I would probably put it at three, though, again, depending on the day. I would choose this over one of the other ones, potentially. This is the one that kicked off that Sauvage DNA, lavender, ambroxan, bergamot, Sichuan pepper, black pepper. It's gonna have a little bit of a metallic opening. Honestly, it's not as 
bad as some people say. Some people will be like, oh my God, it's so metallic and screechy. It gave me a headache and, and then my head exploded and I had to go get it sewn back together and, and put staples in because Savage did that to me. I can't believe it. So it's a bit metallic but not, not too much. You get that nice bergamot in the opening. It's really fresh and uh, super easy to wear. Year round, usability, daytime, nighttime, compliment beast, performance is fantastic, projects heavily, lasts for a long time. Sauvage Eau de Toilette is great. There's a reason so many people buy it and uh, it's, it's basically the Aqua de Jo of today, other than Aqua de Jo, which is still out. But I mean, when Aqua de Jo first came out, that's what Dior Sauvage is like now. Number two, going with Sauvage Elixir. Now this is the newest one. It's also the most expensive at 60 milliliters. This costs $155. So that's what you would get uh, for 100 milliliters of Sauvage Parfum. Difference here is where Sauvage Parfum has kind of mediocre performance compared to the other fragrances in the Sauvage line. Sauvage Elixir is a beast. This thing lasts forever and it projects heavily. So performance wise, it's not even close. It annihilates Sauvage Parfum. This one's got lavender, cinnamon woods, tonka and nutmeg as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one shies away actually a pretty good amount from the Sauvage DNA. It's, it's still in there. But with Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and Very Cool Spray, those are pretty close. Just doing things in a, a different way, but you can still pick out that, that DNA immediately. Sauvage Parfum changed things up a bit. That one, you know, went a little darker and all that, but you could still pick out that Sauvage DNA. This one smells more like an 80s throwback fragrance done with a modern touch and made apocalyptically powerful. So for me, somebody who really likes that style of fragrance, it works very well. For somebody who is not really into fragrances with a throwback feel, probably not gonna work out so well for them. And we'll talk about that when I talk about which fragrances are best for the most people, most likely. So obviously for me, that's gonna leave Sauvage Eau de Parfum as the number one for me personally. And a lot of that just comes down to the versatility. I think that for me personally, at this point, Sauvage Eau de Parfum is the one that has the most usability for me. Now, the Eau de Toilette I've worn the most, and like I said, some days I would pick the Eau de Toilette over the Eau de Parfum, but the Eau de Parfum adds in a nice vanilla to the Sauvage Eau de Toilette DNA. Gives it this nice sweetness, this nice contrast, and it doesn't go as heavy with the Ambroxan. It still has that Ambroxan, still here for sure, just not quite as, as loud, not quite as punchy. So it's a little bit smoother, a little bit more rounded off, a little bit richer. And uh, it's maybe not as, if you wanna call it synthetically sweet, and maybe not quite that. It still has that sweetness. Like I said, the vanilla in here is really good. It's just not bashing you over the head with the hammer. Sauvage Eau de Parfum, daytime, nighttime, any season. You can use it, performance is there. It's a great scent. So that is my top five. You got very cool spray and then Sauvage Parfum, then the Eau de Toilette, then Elixir, then Eau de Parfum. Now let's go over what I think would work best for most people. So for this, I'm gonna talk about each fragrance and who it would probably work best for. That way you have a better idea of who the fragrance is really made for. So Sauvage Very Cool Spray. This one is gonna be better suited for people who wanna throw it into a bag and take it with them somewhere. So this would be if you wanna throw it into a gym bag, use it after you work out, or take it with you on a trip, you know, when you're just doing like a weekend kind of deal and throw it and go. It's really made to freshen up throughout the day. They kind of tell you right there, fresh eau de toilette, very cool spray. So it's supposed to be something that puts you into a, kind of a, an uplifted mental state when you spray the stuff on. That's how they pitch it. It's gonna give you a very similar vibe to Sauvage Eau de Toilette, just lightened up, freshened up. Going to appeal more probably to younger guys than older guys. Uh, for me, I just, like I said, if I'm gonna wear a fragrance, I probably wanna wear a fragrance fragrance, not one that's half deodorant style, half fragrance, though I know it's an eau de toilette, I get it. But that's who that's going to, to work more for, people that just want something nice, refreshing, clean, compliment pulling, easy to wear, 
that they they want to just throw into a bag you know bust it out whenever spray it on real quick and go but i wouldn't say that that's number five for most people i would say for most people if i had to put one of these at number five i would probably put savage parfum and that's going to be because again the performance on this is not up to par for the price that you pay it does come across more like a fragrance that's better suited for evening situations that are more more formal maybe you could wear it to the office potentially but i think that some of the other fragrances here would be better suited for that even very cool spray i think might be so i would say five savage parfum just cost a whole lot and uh, I think that the other ones are more versatile. Number four, I guess I would put very cool spray. Number three, I would put Sauvage Elixir. This stuff is super powerful. Again, it's going to appeal more to older guys, people that like fragrances that have a throwback feel to them. Quality on it's fantastic, but I think that the scope of who would wear that fragrance is more limited than the next two. So obviously the top two, I feel like for most people, are Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. And truly, this is a tie. So let me explain. I think if you're a younger guy, you'll probably like the Eau de Toilette more. If you're, let's say, middle-aged and older, you'll probably gravitate more toward the Eau de Parfum. Not in all situations, but in most. It also depends on where you live. So the average temperature, if you're somewhere where it's really hot all the time, the Eau de Toilette's going to appeal to you more than the Eau de Parfum. If you're somewhere where it's colder more often, the Eau de Parfum will probably appeal to you more than the Eau de Toilette. So I wouldn't say necessarily on the whole when you're talking about most people that this is better than this or this is better than this. They're honestly pretty close to each other. I wouldn't say these two fragrances are massively different. This is just a tweaked version of this. I would say for sure though in the Sauvage line that these two are the best for most people in most situations. These are the most versatile two. These you can use year round, daytime, nighttime, to the office, just don't spray it on too heavily. Uh, more formal situations, dates, evenings out, uh, you can do anything with them. They are huge compliment pullers. They both have fantastic performance. One does not stand that much higher than the other. It really depends on what you want. If you want one that's a little fresher, a little louder, a little bit more in your face with a little more projection, the Eau de Toilette. If you want one that's smoother, that has a nice vanilla note, that still has good performance, but comes across maybe a little bit more uh, buttoned up, a little bit more reined in, a little bit more sophisticated, go with the Eau de Parfum. I can't really tell you this one is definitely better for the majority of people than that one. So this is a tie. It depends on the person, where they live, what they want it for. So there we go, Dior Sauvage, my personal top five as of this video, plus how I think they would work for the vast majority of people. I like Elixir a ton, but I think realistically for the vast majority of people, and we're talking here, just your average everyday person, I think the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum are still a better choice. They cost less, and they'll be used more. All right, it's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments below, what is your lineup for Dior Sauvage? What's your five, four, three, two, one? Let me know. And if you haven't smelled one, that's fine. You can just leave that one out or two or three, whatever. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.